hello again to this blog about mexico city so if you watch my first video i shared the first half of it which was basically one weekend and this is the second part in this second part i think uh, i'm gonna share what i consider to be the most cultural part of my trip because i went to museums castles and then um, of course i had the opportunity to take more photos in these places so and also at the very end i'm gonna share something about the food and the sense of safety when you're traveling to mexico so um, yeah of course i'm gonna share some pictures in between and at the end so with that being said let's get to it so my trip continued and on tuesday i headed to chapultepec castle some say that it is the only castle in the whole Latin American region where royalty has ever lived. What I can say for sure is that it is in the middle of a forest and in the top of a hill. There are different attractions and even museums. Now, the name comes from Chapulín, the Nahuatl name for grasshopper species that can be found across the forest and Tepec, meaning hill, hence grasshopper hill. The line of people waiting to enter the castle was quite long, even on a weekday, so I had to wait for some 25 minutes. I entered to the castle after, I don't know, maybe 25 minutes of queuing. It was 85 pesos, which is about, I don't know, four US dollars. Not so bad. It's actually a nice place for photos here. The castle is a great place to appreciate the history of the foundations of the country with great detail. Once the history lesson is over, it has a unique place for panoramic 360 degree views of the city. And most remarkably, Paseo de la Reforma Avenue. The visit also took me more than I expected and therefore I was expected to be just a morning visit, but I ended up being there for almost the whole day until closing time, which is 5 p.m. My visit to the Anthropology Museum had to wait until Thursday. So the museum closes at 5 and we are being kicked out. Uh, yeah, I suppose one morning or one afternoon is enough for it. So, yeah, pretty worth it. Wednesday, it was time again to get out of the capital city and I went to a guided tour to Teotihuacan. It's a beautiful day in Mexico City. We're heading to Teotihuacan and Basilica today. It takes a bit longer than one hour to get there by bus. The first stop was a local workshop where we, the visitors, could have a glance at the obsidian works. This stone was central to the economy of the ancient civilization of Teotihuacan. That little introduction to the obsidian craft served as a context to what we would see next when visiting the pyramids. To my surprise, it was not the Aztecs who lived or even founded Teotihuacan. 
but an older civilization that mastered the obsidian rock trade but then collapsed for several reasons such as political instability and climate change and maybe other reasons it's super hot here and um, oh but that's good because good weather means more exploring and yeah uh, have to be all covered not only for the pandemic but also for obvious reasons weather reasons so yeah and this is this is it that's what we came for today so beautiful here is where the ancient sun and moon pyramids are located according to the tour guide when the aztecs discovered the place it was so awe-inspiring that they consider it sacred and it was a place of religious pilgrimage okay according to the guide that's the pyramid of the moon pyramide de la luna that corridor is called the corridor of the death and that is the pyramid of the sun pretty neat we 21st century tourists had around 1.5 hours to look around and explore the ruins, buy souvenirs, and take photos from different angles. I consider the time to explore this archaeological site plenty, but do not forget to bring a hat, shades, and apply strong sunscreen to avoid some serious skin damage due to the long exposure to that merciless summer sun. Closest I can get to the moon pyramid. Okay, I think we did it right booking this tour today because the weather is really good for this kind of activities. Uh, we're done with our tour and now we will have just about one hour or maybe 50 minutes just to roam and take a look around, buy some souvenirs. And of course, what I'm gonna do now is just get the best angles that I can. But it's really beautiful here. I think uh, it's just one hour or so from Mexico City and it's, it's really nice. I like it. After that, we headed to a well-deserved buffet lunch And then to the last stop of, all, of our tour, the Basilica de Guadalupe, back in Ciudad de Mexico. Okay, this is the, the courtyard or the court of the Americas from the Basilica. So. It's quite big. It's very summery here. The scorching sun. Although this was a secondary stop, I wish we had more time to just roam around and explore the Basilica de Guadalupe. Regardless of the religious meaning, the architecture and the historical value of the place are undeniable. Once again, the soil problem that makes buildings tilt and sink in the city of Mexico is evident here, without looking too hard. Okay, this is my last full day in Mexico City. Uh, and today I'm going to the Museum of Anthropology. And weather is awesome, as the background can tell. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. I hope this will be a five to six hours visit because I think this is the main thing. If there is only one thing you can do in Mexico City, uh, a lot of people say this is it. The thing you should be doing. And yeah, I'll be talking about it more afterwards. <music> According to this map, 
Uh, there are 22 sections that I will have to go through from beginning to end and that will take me the next five hours of cultural immersion into the regional history. So I'm pretty excited because it's also about my own country, El Salvador. Uh, so I suppose some things will be very familiar for me. I managed to get to the Anthropology Museum right after the opening. This place is located right in front of the Chapultepec Forest, so it is technically possible to visit both the Chapultepec Castle and this museum on the same day. However, I knew that my visit would not be a brief one, since I knew from my previous research that the permanent exhibition is full of incredible artifacts and relics of the pre-colonial civilizations that I wanted to see as detail as possible. I'm kind of a history geek at this point in my life. With two floors divided into 22 showrooms, six hours were enough for me to barely see the ground floor only. If I had to do it again, I would skip the first showrooms and start right with the Teotihuacan civilization and give priority to the large introductory text of each room instead of reading every single note on every single piece. So take note and make adjustments. Okay, it's been almost three hours trying to finish only the first half of the museum and only the first floor. Uh, and no wonder there are plenty of benches so people can rest because it's really exhausting. Is it amazing? Of course, it's pretty exhausting. <laughs> I love it so. So yeah, yeah, uh, I'll take some some minutes to rest and then continue. Naturally, the center of the whole visit for first-timers is the Aztec Sun Stone, a 25-ton rounded Aztec sculpture that is famous worldwide. Certainly a masterpiece worth seeing face to face. I would also dedicate more time to the Mayan civilization, for it is the civilization that populated some territories of my country, El Salvador. Museum. And I think it's actually everything that I'm going to do because it's too much. Definitely you need a couple of days to see it over here. Impressive. <laughs> After this visit that occupied most of my daytime hours, I grabbed an Uber as soon as I could and headed to the Somaya Museum. Last part of the day and also last part of the trip. The Somaya Museum. So I made it to the Som Somaya Museum, but turns out two things. Number one, it's free, surprisingly. They only asked me for my luggage, but now I only have 30 minutes to do this because they close at 6.30. Not so shabby. This museum is free of cost and closes at 6.30 p.m. with its six exhibitions with different art pieces of European and Latin American origin. Any time in this place is time well spent. Okay, it's maybe like 12 minutes left. The guy told me that there are five sections in total and I just did three. And I think I have to settle with that. This is the top floor. I spent 
spend one whole week in the city of Mexico. But before I go, I want to share my uh, takeaways of the food of Mexico. As a Salvadorian myself, I think it's, um, I was surrounded, I grew up surrounded by Mexican food, but it definitely didn't disappoint. So um, I think I leave saying that whoever wants to come will find something that they like. And also maybe two things that I had to try when in Mexico was the crickets, which I have really had the time to try when I was in Puebla and also the chile en nogada, which was really a surprise. I wasn't even expecting to try it. As a general rule, as my friend said, if you're alone and you don't know what to eat, just look for the place that smells good, has a lot of people, and you will never go wrong. Whatever they sell, I'm pretty sure that you will like. Mexico is a fantastic place for food, and I definitely live uh, with all my expectations fulfilled. Regarding the sense of safety or to be safe while you're exploring or while you are uh, doing some tourism, I think if you're Latin American, you are pretty familiar with the uh, unwritten rules that you have to follow. For example, do, don't ever leave your stuff unattended. Try to have an eye or to keep an eye on your stuff all the time. Uh, also, do not uh, venture yourself to empty places or do not be so spontaneous when you're trying to go to alleys just to get a shot or just to see what's in there. Just try to stay in the places where you see the most tourists and also um, try to uh, explore and wander around during daytime because at night some things may happen and if you need to take uh, transportation and you're not so sure, it's better to take what well, we these days have the great advantage of having services such as Uber. So you just take one and you'll be safe in most cases. So I didn't have any occurrence happening to me, nothing happened, uh, no incidents, but of course I took these measures and also if you know a local, locals will definitely tell you where to go, where not to go and keep yourself safe. So that pretty much sums up all my trip to Mexico and I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed my photos as I enjoyed taking them and looking at them after the trip. So uh, until the next time, bye.